Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, back to the 47 amp, and today I want to go over how I decide how I want to lay out the components in the amp. And I know sometimes it might look like that, oh, you, she's just putting stuff here and there, whatever. I really put a lot of thought into especially separating the AC from the signal path. And my amps have no hum in them. And we don't get any noise coming from this side over to this side. So I think I've done a good job at figuring out how to lay stuff out. And I really think about like heat management and all of that kind of stuff too. And we're going to be doing things a little differently on this amp. We're not going to be mounting the cathode resistors on the top of the amp. So we're going to have to do some different stuff there to make sure that we don't overheat the capacitors and stuff inside the amp. Plus, I don't want to drill a bunch of holes up here either. So we'll get into that in a little bit, probably in the next couple of episodes. But for now, let's go over the layout. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the speaker jacks and the RCA jacks and, you know, the, the, the regular kind of stuff on this amp. And we're going to get ready to drill all that out. So first, let's go over the layout. And next video, we'll start fabbing up the rest of this chassis. So here we go. Okay, here we are. We got all the stuff mounted on the top of the chassis. And we're ready now to start diving into what I think is one of the most critical parts of putting an amplifier together, and that is figuring out where all the components are going to go and ensuring that we don't have any interaction between the signal path and the AC wiring that's all floating around inside this thing together. And we need to make sure that we don't have hum and other issues like that in the finished amplifier. The other thing that we're going to be doing a little differently on this one is... In the past, I've had multi-tap output transformers, and I've just wired up the 8-ohm taps. Well, on this one, we've got 4, 8, and 16-ohm taps, and I've decided I'm going to go ahead and wire up all of them. And so we're going to have the ground, 4, 8, 16-ohm for each channel laid out like this, and I think there's plenty of room across the back of this to, to do that. So we're going to be punching holes here across the back, mounting all of these jacks. I did order these in this silver, they call it rhodium color, but they may not be here for a month or so. And so I'm going to go ahead and mount these gold ones for now. And then when the silver ones come in, swap them out because I'm going with a silver and black theme on this amp. I've also got these um, rhodium colored RCA jacks, which are going to be mounted over here on this side, like I've done on several of my other amps, so that the wiring just comes across here to the volume pot and then to the input tubes. The other thing that we need to mount is this power switch. And again, we've got silver to go with our theme, and it's a real little short toggle basic little on off switch can be mounted over here on this corner right next to the transformer so that all of the high voltage AC is just going to be over here in this corner and some of it will be coming up here a little further and I'll show you that when I turn the amp over so I also want to show you how nice this little bracket. I ended up agreeing with you, replied in the comments that this would look better black. And while I really like the way this looks, and let me zoom in here. I mean, I think that little bracket turned out really nice looking black. And I'm trying to also use Phillips head screws where I can, because it's probably more period correct. I'm not sure that they were using these Allen bolts, but Allen were the only thing that would fit in there. And then 
Obviously, these little things need to be Allen bolts too, but they're not quite as visible. I don't think you're going to really see that, but these Phillips heads here do kind of stand out, as well as the Phillips heads holding like this choke down and stuff. Also used Phillips head screws on the transformers themselves. I put in black Phillips head screws so they match the ones that were on the output transformers. So I think all of that turned out really nice. And you saw it last with the with the with the tubes all in it, but even just like this, it looks really nice. And again, the little bracket there for the can cap looks really sweet. Just I'm really really excited and happy with the way this thing is aesthetically turning out. Again, here in the front, we're gonna have our little black volume knob right here. And then over on this side, we'll have our little silver and black skunky logo. So let's look inside the amp. Let me flip this thing over. And as you can see right now, we've got a mess of wires. And so if we pull these all over to one side, you can see most of those are coming off of the output transformers. These are all going to be going up to the jacks on the back. So those are all going to get used. And then this is our... B plus wire that comes over here to our power supply like this and these these will probably get you know wide together and then one wire running right over here we'll see when we get to that part then we have these multi taps on the primary and what I think I'm going to do this time instead of like cutting these off and taping them off or, or heat shrinking them off I'm going to get one of these five terminal strips and either put it on you know on this side and I'm kind of leaning that way is maybe put one here and then one over here but then have all four of these wires from this transformer come over here to this tag strip and then use whichever one we're going to for this particular amp but have the other ones tied off here for possible future use because I could see this amp getting repurposed with some other five pin tubes or the way these sockets are made. And because I just used some hot glue to kind of attach these or to keep them from rotating and then put the clips on them, that I could take these clips off and they make octal sockets that are exactly like these. And in the future could turn this into a amp that uses octal sockets instead of these five pins or you could swap these out for four pin ones and so anyway I thought it would be just nice and look good to have these tied off in pairs like this over here to a tag strip under this bolt that holds the transformer down so we're going to do that and that will get rid of all of these transformer wires kind of tuck these out of the way so that we have the power transformer wires to look at and these get paired together and I think the black and the blue and the brown and the white get paired together I'll have to look back through the schematic of the transformer to see exactly which one of these get paired up together a pair of these is going to come over here to the neutral on the IEC connector and then another pair of these are going to go to one leg of this switch and then the other side of this switch is going to come over here to the hot leg on the IC connector. Some of this stuff I've done multiple times on other amplifiers. So I'm probably going to like wire up the primary of the transformer off camera and then come back and zoom in and show you how I've wired this up. It's not real complicated wiring. So then the next wire we have is we've got the center taps for both of the transformers and they're going to come over here and I haven't decided exactly yet how I'm going to do this. I may use a terminal strip like one of these and put it down here on one of these bolts. You know, there's the option of using one of these longer ones and then doing a blind hole and tagging the other end down here. But 
somewhere down in here is going to be our star ground. And so these two, whoop, these two center tap wires, the center tap for the 6.3 volt heaters and the center tap for the high voltage windings are going to connect to wherever the star ground point is we make over here. So then we have, these are the high voltage wires and the five volt heaters. These come over here to this rectifier tube. And I have to sit down and look at the schematic and figure out which ones go where, but all four of these wires are gonna to go to the rectifier tube. And then one of them, one of the pins is gonna come over here to this first capacitor, this motor run cap. And then the other side of it is going to go to ground. And then we need a tag strip over in this area somewhere to go to the second cap, then to the choke, then out of this choke to the next cap. Then we're going to have another choke bolted up here to the side and the front and then come back out, and that's going to be our final B+. Plus. And so I need to figure out how I'm going to wire all of that stuff. I mean, actually, this choke is probably going to be feeding off of, off of this, then come over to the tag strip, then go back to the second choke, then back out. Anyway, I'm going to work all that out when I figure out the size of the capacitors and what kind of capacitors I'm going to use. Then the other thing that we're going to have to do is... We've got this 6.3 volts AC. Like I said, the center tap's gonna come over here and be grounded. So, and, and I may end up just cooking these all up right here to like a little three terminal strip under this transformer bolt. May run them further down here. Not sure yet, haven't totally decided. This might be a good spot though, just to run them here out of the transformer so that then I can do a tightly twisted pair. I've decided to wire these two heaters in series. And so one wire is going to come up. Then we're going to have a wire going from one side to the other. Going to have a resistor between them. And then the other wire for the heater is going to come back and go up here. I have to figure out exactly how I want to do this. I may have the the pair of wires come up and then go through this tube and then twist these together to come over to here and then put a resistor in between them. And the reason for the resistor is we need to drop the voltage down because these are two and a half volt tubes and in series they need five volts and so we got 6.3 volts. So we need a resistor between the two of them that will evenly drop the voltage down from 6.3 to 5 volts between the two tubes and then have the center tap over here to this other ground. And I hope that makes sense. I'll show you in a drawing schematic later when I get this all finalized. I want to use the 6.3 volts out of this transformer because a couple of people have said, why don't you just put another 2.5 volt transformer? Well. One of the problems we've got is we're going to have to put a couple of two and a half volt transformers over here to power up the filaments of the 47 tubes. And then, like I said, we're going to have another choke here. And, guys, we're just running out of room inside here to be adding more transformers. The other problem is if we end up having to use the 56 tubes... We are going to have to add another transformer, and the only spot I see that's really usable would be to add another one back here. And one of the problems is these 27 tubes pull a lot of amperage. They pull 1.75 amps each. And there's not a 3.5 amp filament transformer readily available. There are 3 amps, which isn't enough. And these smaller ones are two and a half amps, which you would need one of these for each one of these tubes. And again, 
Then you start, you know, we wouldn't have room to even put our speaker jacks here. And I don't want to be like bolting stuff to the front panel and having bolts sticking out like this. And I don't really like the idea of hanging this heavy transformer off a blind hole. I don't think they're strong enough for that. And so this is just kind of what we're going to have to deal with. If I do have to add a, another transformer for the 56 tubes, if we do need to add those, one of these little two and a half amp ones will be enough because the 56 tubes only pull one amp each on the heaters. So I hope that makes sense. I know that was kind of a long-winded thing, but, you know, again, once I get kind of my schematic finalized for the power supply, I'll post that. And I'm still working out all of the details on the main schematic. But I have a pretty good idea of how I'm going to be doing that. And so what we're going to be doing, let me get all this, let me get this, get this wiring out of the way since we've kind of covered that. We're going to have these little filament transformers over here. We're going to have one of them right in front of the switch. And then the other one, like right next to this one. And I'm hoping that I can run the, we're not going to be using the center tap. And I'm hoping to run these as twisted pairs across this gap. And so I'm probably going to put like a five terminal strip here off of this bolt. And then have those two on one side, the other two on the other side run the twisted pair across here and then we're going to have a 100 ohm hum pot for each of these output tubes and you have the two and a half volts across the potentiometer and on the center of it we pull off the signal or the cathode signal from the center of the potentiometer and then you can adjust that potentiometer to make it as quiet as you can. And I found a couple of, Vichy makes some 10 turn 100 ohm pots that look to be high enough wattage. And being 10 turns, it's got a lot more precision than like a three quarter turn pot would have as far as finding the quiet spot. So I'm going to put a couple of these here, and they have a silver shaft on them that I'm not really planning to put a knob on them either, that you can just turn them with your fingers. So we're going to put one on for each of these tubes. haven't decided exactly you know, if I'm going to put them inboard or outboard or right behind the tube or how I'm exactly going to do that. Then the last thing that we have to do is the cathode resistors. And I was originally planning on doing a fixed bias where we run a negative voltage to the grid and just ground the cathode. And I was even thinking about just grounding the center tap of this transformer. But I decided to go with this hum pot. also decided to go with a cathode resistor rather than fixed bias because with a fixed bias on the grid, you have to use a fairly low value resistor that is the grid leak resistor to the negative voltage source and that makes the tube harder to drive and these tubes can run a fairly high value grid leak resistor if you're using cathode bias you can use up to a half a meg or 500 k ohms so you know we could probably use a 510 k or a 470 k grid leak resistor which will make this tube a lot easier to drive with these 27 tubes, which we're already worried about may not have enough voltage swing. So that's the main reason we're going to be going with a cathode bias with a bypass capacitor. So I'm thinking about getting a piece of angle aluminum, kind of like I did on that A50 amp, and make a bracket over here that will be a heat sink. It will stick up about that high that then these cathode resistors bolt to and then put some vent holes here in the chassis for the heat to circulate up and pass the tubes. And I've got a really cool little thing for possibly making that vent with, which I'll show you in the future. 
but I think it will add another cool kind of aesthetic thing to this amp. So that's kind of what we're thinking about now. So we're going to use this little area over here that's going to be used for the cathode resistors and bypass caps. We can run the AC voltage across here and it keeps it away from the signal stuff that's all over here with the volume pot and the RCA jacks all over in this corner. Then we have all the low voltage signal stuff over here in this corner, which is like opposite where the high voltage AC is. So should help keep the hum down. And it's one of the reasons I've had a viewer commenting on the forum about building his amp with the transformer in the middle and the output transformers on both sides. And while a lot of amps do that style and it makes it look real symmetrical, it's really hard to keep the AC voltage away from the you know signal stuff. And I think this layout has worked really well for me in the past, so I'm sticking to it. So I think this is a good place to kind of wrap up this video. I wanted to go through my thought process on the how and why I lay out amplifiers like I do. So let's wrap this up here. So we're ready now to dive back into fab work on the exterior, kind of middle part of the chassis, get our speaker jacks installed, figure out where we're going to put all of our transformers and our little choke and all of that kind of stuff. I did learn tonight about a cool thing that there is a thing called an adjustable power resistor where you can move this center little clamp thing on a power resistor and adjust the ohms that it drops across the heaters. And you may have noticed I put some masking tape over these transformers so we don't scratch the paint or the lettering off of them. So again, aesthetics is king on this amp and that's what we're really shooting for. Gonna be going over the schematic soon. I will tell you guys, and I've said this before, but this amp especially, don't try to build this thing yet. This could be a total failure. I have no idea if this is going to work well for hi-fi use because we're trying to make 90-year-old tubes work with 90-year newer technology and circuitry. And so it may or may not work out well at all. So. If you try to like follow along and build this thing, and I think somebody was talking about they were trying to order the transformers and sort order this power transformer and stuff. I, hey, you're on your own. You know, this, like I said, four videos from now, or five or ten or whatever videos when we get to the end of this, I might be like, guys, this didn't work at all. I'm bailing. We're changing out all the tube sockets and we're going to repurpose this chassis into something else which is one of the reasons that I designed it the way I did. If this doesn't work out, most of this iron and stuff can be used for more modern tubes if I can't get these 90-year-old tubes to work like I want. Finger crossed we're going to be able to get this to work. It does look super cool. And I'm excited to get started on drilling the rest of this stuff so I can get into the wiring. I need to spend a little time designing the power supply. I want to get any of the parts that I don't have here ordered, like I need to order the little hump pots that I'm going to be using and some other things, but I want to wait and get one big order in, get the stuff ordered, so then we can finish this thing up, or at least get as much of it wired up as we can before we run into another parts issue. So anyway, hope you're enjoying this series, and I hope you enjoy my channel. If you are, please subscribe, please like this video, I think there's a little bell over here you can hit that'll ring you next time we have another one in the series. And we'll see you soon for more 47 Globe Tube Amplifier Fun. Have a great day.